So let's take a look at those um, air pollutants that man puts into the atmosphere. Not so surprising, many of these um, pollutants that we put into the atmosphere are directly related to us burning fossil fuels. So that could be either, remember fossil fuels, could be coal, um, gas, oil, natural gas. But whenever we burn fossil fuels, basically we're taking the hydrocarbon part of the fossil fuel that has carbon and hydrogen, and we are reacting with oxygen. We are basically a type of uh, burning it. And if all goes well, basically all we'll get back, if it's complete combustion, is carbon dioxide and water. Um, notice this first pollutant that can happen when we burn fossil fuels is carbon monoxide. The formula for carbon monoxide is CO. You may have heard of carbon monoxide poisoning. Some of us have actually carbon monoxide detectors um, because we have furnaces or things like that where we are burning fossil fuels and we want to make sure that we don't have a buildup of, of carbon monoxide gas. It does not take much carbon monoxide in the atmosphere that people are breathing to basically, um, we take it into our lungs and as I understand it, it ties up I think our hemoglobin so our iron, our blood basically stops working with a very small amount of carbon monoxide um, inhaled. So carbon monoxide definitely is adverse to life and it's a result of, like I said, incomplete combustion burning fossil fuels. Um, way back, well, not that far back, but when I was a kid, we actually had, um, you could buy leaded or unleaded gas. And um, you can't buy leaded gas anymore, but, but lead is actually in our fossil fuels, some of our fossil fuels, and if we burn fossil fuels with lead in it, it will basically aerosolize. The symbol for lead, of course, is PB. And it does not take much lead in the atmosphere to have consequences. For instance, we really think that um, our babies and our young, um, our, our young people, you know, if they're exposed to lead in the developing stages, it can, it can cause brain damage, I think I've read. All right, so sulfur dioxide and sulfur trioxide, so SO2 and SO3. Okay, these are, again... Um, we can have sulfur, just S, we can have sulfur in our hydrocarbons and um, sulfur, I guess I should say, in our fossil fuels. And if we have sulfur in our fossil fuels, sometimes what we'll get is the are these things. Um, this is often the case when we burn coal um, in our factories. So these actually, we're going to see here in a minute, uh, acid, we're going to talk about acid rain and Actually, I think it's um, might be both, but uh, I think especially the SO3 can um, interact with uh, moisture in the air and form be one of the things that gives us acid rain. Um, nitric oxide and dioxide, so NO and NO2. Okay, not good to breathe. Um, again, burning fossil fuels. Um, this one, photochemical smog, is a good example of a secondary pollutant. And I have that, I kind of got ahead of my si myself on this slide. A secondary pollutant is pollutant. Basically takes primary pollutants and turns them into pollutants. I mean, I guess I should say a secondary pollutant basically takes something that may or may not be a pollutant as as it's being released in the atmosphere, but it turns it into a pollutant. So, for instance, smog, like we saw um, hovering over China, smog is basically looks like fog, but it basic, but it's created because of pollution. That's smog. So, uh, this uh, photochemical smog is um, notice that the NO and NO2 up there put out by burning fossil fuels. That's what um, ultimately is the crux of, of photochemical smog. Let's see what else we got. Ozone. Ozone can be both be a primary pollutant and a secondary pollutant. I know we talked the, uh, earlier in this course about ozone, and I think I might have asked you a question. I can't remember. But the formula for ozone is O3. 
and um, there's good ozone and bad ozone. <laughs> the good ozone is in the stratosphere, the bad ozone is in the troposphere. Okay, that would be the layer of the Earth's atmosphere closest to the Earth. Okay, so we get ozone um, again when we burn fossil fuels. And ozone can, if you've ever gone through a big city, sometimes they'll have flashing signs that says ozone alert, or maybe even with their weather, um, their weather forecast in the morning, they'll say whether the ozone will be high or low in a large city. So basically people who have things like asthma and bronchitis, when we have a lot of O3 in the atmosphere, in the troposphere, it can be hard for them to breathe. Ozone also is another way we get that smog, photochemical smog. It's a secondary pollutant. So we talked about burning fossil fuels is, um, can give us all a variety of, of pollutants. And so transportation is a big way that we uh, humans, um, I should say, uh, transportation is a reason for uh, burning a lot of fossil fuels. So a primary pollutant then is something that we put into the atmosphere or something that's in the atmosphere that directly has an adverse effect on life. A secondary pollutant then is something um, that, it's, it's a secondary pollutant, think of it this way, it needs some sort of, I think, reaction. Um, or process, a physical process or a chemical process, to take something that may or may not be a pollutant and turn it into a pollutant. Okay, so it has to combine with something else. So photochemical smog, we saw um, on the previous slide, photochemical smog can come from our NO and our NO2, and then photochemical smog can also come from our um, ozone. Photochemical smog can also come from a broad group of uh, compounds known as volatile organic compounds. Now, I kind of wish I need to change my slides because not all volatile organic compounds are non-toxic. That would not be the case. But I can tell you that volatile organic compounds, um, sometimes remember when I said that we burn hydrocarbons, we burn fossil fuels, we take uh, something that contains carbons and hydrogens, and we react with oxygen to form carbon dioxide and water. You know, that's a, a really simple way to look at it. But again, one of the things that can be put out from combustion are these, generally speaking, VOCs, volatile organic compounds. And if they come from this combustion process, they are, generally speaking, these would be non-toxic. But it's not fair to say that all VOCs are non-toxic. So, but the point is that it's these non-toxic VOCs then that actually can be another way that we get photochemical smog. So we'll add that to the list. So how do you get photochemical smog? You can take VOCs from um, combustion of um, fossil fuels. You can take ozone. You can take um, NO2. Okay. Um, so, so a secondary, but photochemical smog is definitely an example of a secondary pollutant. Why? Because basically it's a pollutant that's formed from um, something else. <laughs> Okay, photochemical smog. One of the things that strikes me is, you know, this is an old picture, 1950s, and it's um, East Chicago. Uh, we have come a long way with regard to cleaning up our act. Now, do we have farther to go? Probably, but have we come a long way? Yes, we have. So, 